Hi, this is Dr. S and this is video 6 of my series on reaction rates for year 13 A-level chemistry. In the previous video we looked at how to use colorimetry as part of a continuous rate monitoring experiment. The idea was that we looked at the change in concentration over time so we could determine a concentration time graph. Now concentration time graphs you'll have seen before. In most cases what you'll have seen before is a concentration time graph relating to the production of a product, which looks like that. When we're looking at determining the order of reaction using these, which is the ultimate aim, what we tend to do is use the concentration time graphs of a reagent being used up, in which case they look more like that. And this is probably what you'll expect from your previous experiments. But actually this is specifically for a first order reagent. We've not looked at previously zero orders or second orders. So now what we need to do is look at how that would be different if we had those reagents. So let's say we have a concentration time graph and we had a first order reagent on there that looks a bit like that. Those of you that do physics or are interested in radioactive decay might recognize this. This looks like an exponential curve. More on that later. But that is a first order reaction. The reason it's that shape is because there's a linear relationship between the concentration of a first order reagent and the rate. So if you calculate the rate at any particular point using a tangent, you should actually find that when the concentration halves, the rate is halved. So the gradient would be exactly half. With a zero order reagent, there is no relationship between the concentration and the rate. The rate will proceed at the same rate independent of what that concentration is. It's still a reagent, so it's being used up, but it's being used up at a constant rate. So we can represent that by a straight line for a zero order reagent. There is a much greater dependency on concentration for second order reagents because as we saw in previous videos the rate is proportional to the square of the concentration so actually what that means is we end up with a graph more like this in which as time goes on the concentration rapidly decreases and then the curve gets shallower so that'll be a second order the exam board are likely to ask you about a zero or a first order using concentration time graphs, so you should be able to recognize that a zero order reagent has a linear relationship with a concentration time graph, and a first order has what we call this exponential decay curve. All right, there's something else about first order reagents that you need to be aware of. So here is a more detailed graph of the use of a first order reagent. So you should be able to see that the concentration at the beginning of the reaction is 0.8 mole per decimeter cubed, and then it decreases as time progresses. Now the three points that I've written on there should give you a hint as to what's coming up next. If we look at the time taken for the concentration to exactly halve from 0.8 to 0.4, that takes 50 seconds. If you then look at how long it takes to have again from 0 0.4 to 0 0.2, it's exactly 50 seconds again. And then how much how long does it take to have from 0 0.2 to 0 0.1? Exactly 50 seconds again. So this is a specific characteristic of a first order reagent. It has what we call a constant half-life. Those of you that are familiar with radioactive decay will have heard of half-life. The chemical definition is the time taken for the concentration of a reagent to exactly half. So a constant half-life. That is also useful because actually if we have a first order reaction, so by first order reaction I don't mean just one reagent, I mean a first order reaction overall, so the overall order is one. So really there's only one reagent being used up, being contributed to the rate equation. Then we can use the half-life in order to calculate 
the rate constant. So there is a, a relationship which is k equals ln2, so the natural log of 2, over the half-life. Those of you that are not familiar with ln, it's in A-level maths. Um, if you don't do A-level maths, then you will use this quite a few times in chemistry. The shortcut is there's a button on your calculator marked ln. So if you try and find that, then make sure that if you calculate an ln2, it comes up with an answer of 0 0.693. That's for ln2. If I then divide that by the half-life, which in this example is 50 seconds, then I get my rate constant, the actual value of a rate constant. So 0 0.693 over 50 gives me a value of 0 0.0139 seconds to the minus 1. It has to be seconds to the minus 1 because the overall order has to be one for this to work. It doesn't work if you've just got a first order reagent and another first order reagent. It has to be first order reaction overall. But it's a nice shortcut to calculate the rate constant if you're given a constant half-life and told that it's a first order reaction. Okay. In my next video, we're going to introduce the idea of initial rates methods, which are experimental methods that allow us to determine orders of reaction in a slightly different way. Okay, I'll see you then.